thought I'd sit and talk to you guys going into work today, listening to a little house music, getting my head right for everything. Thought I'd touch base with you guys on a few things. Uh, one, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, I appreciate all you guys who are following our videos. And uh, next week, I'll be doing a show with the former white supremacists. We're going to be talking about not only the events that happened up in Kenosha this week, but uh, these things that have been happening over the last few years in America regarding um, you know um, police um, excessive force or lethal force being used on uh, uh, black black people black citizens black men particularly and we're going to talk about that and we're also going to talk about uh, the political environment we are now seeing ourselves getting into because of not only these incidents but the responses to these incidents uh, the black lives matter movement and uh, some of the responses we've seen regarding the protesting and the rioting and the looting and how all of this is going to affect our uh, political landscape and how it could possibly affect the upcoming election. That being said, I wanted to talk to you all today specifically about a couple things that have happened. Uh, obviously, we know what happened with uh, Mr. Blake. Uh, he was shot in the back seven times by police while he was entering his, uh, his uh, minivan. And um, from what I gather from the news, uh, he was intervening in a domestic situation. Police were called. And uh, I guess there was a struggle of some type. I, th I think Mr. Blake just confirmed he had a knife. Um, they tased him somehow. All that, I don't know how this works, but they tased him. They were struggling with him. He still got up, walked to his car, and was going to leave, and that's when they shot him. Um, I think all of us agree that the police were wrong in that situation. And um, I know a lot of you got a little upset with me because I said, well, let me wait and see what happens after I see more than this 30 second video that they first put up. A lot of you guys that came to the judgment and conclusion that the police were bogus. I understand why you would do that. But uh, me, I'm just let y'all know I've learned not to really invest myself or who's right or wrong to get more of the story. Because sometimes um, the, the bitch you see isn't telling you the whole story. The bitch you see isn't telling you the whole story anyway. But I know in today's modern social political environment, everybody has picked a side and the police are going to always be wrong or the, the guy who gets shot is going to always be wrong. There's some of you, um, the guy could have had an AK-47 pointing at the police and if he, if he got shot, y'all just said the police was wrong. And there's some of y'all who would say that the brother was wrong if he was reaching for a baby bottle. So it is what it is. This is, this is where we are in America. Um, everybody's picked a side. And unfortunately, you all have allowed yourself to be played into the sides of black lives versus blue lives, you know, and I blame black lives matter and blue lives matter. I blame blue lives matter a little more because they're the ones getting paid to do a job and they should have sense enough not to coin that particular phraseology. Let me explain why I say this. Black lives matter picks the phraseology of black lives matter. Get it? Nice hashtag has a nice ring to it. Um, and then, of course, this becomes a situation, a competition. They always have people yelling, all lives matter. And then we have, you know, people yelling, blue lives matter. Like there is a automatic dichotomy or, you know, this versus that, it, us versus them between black people and anybody in the blue uniforms. Utterly ridiculous. But, hey, this is where we are. That's where we are in America. Like I said, I blame blue lives matter more for this because, again, instead of being reactionary and getting in their feelings about oh you know everybody nobody respects us we have such a hard job yeah we get that but there is some real issues between the african-american communities that are being uh in, in inner cities and in some uh, rural areas that have problems with police and have historically had those problems and i think that it's up to law enforcement to reach out to those communities instead of talking past them or talking to cameras to, to actually engage the community and how law enforcement can more effectively do their job. And the fact is that law enforcement needs to respect the people that they're policing. If you work in a black community, you need to be able to respect the black community. You need to be able to respect whatever community you're working for. Then I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna touch on that a little later in a different conversation. But so the situation happens with Mr. Blake. He gets shot. Obviously we know what's coming after that. Um, again, from what I see, from everything I've seen, the police were dead wrong. And now this young man is paralyzed from the waist down. And we can, I, I've seen people nitpick everything Mr. Blake did. 
did he do some things that he should not have done in that situation realistically and what i say realistically there's people who want to go with the 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 um i guess the the um i don't know the right way of things in a right world mr blake could have done everything he did and not got shot i guarantee you if mr blake had been a white female he could have done the exact same thing a white female could have done the exact same thing with the police acted as wrong or stupid however you want to call it and she would not have gotten shot which gives us the real problem the real problem is not the police the real problem is society and what i mean by that the real problem comes down to the fact that there is a fear of black people particularly of black men specifically now of young black men that is a fear that is ingrained in society has been has been ingrained in society since slavery the fear of black men that we are monsters animals um looking to rape right white women looking to uh rob and steal kill and destroy this is how black men have been portrayed in american society since slavery and now in modern society those of you who are liberal that want to act like you guys are above this you guys help push that narrative in all your media in your music in your films you push the narrative that black men are thugs and criminals and gangsters all right and we should be feared because we just that that gangster that tough that we should be feared now if society feels that way police officers come from to society they don't come from another planet they don't come from another dimension they come from the same society that believes that out the door so you think going to an academy for three months and maybe having a week of sensitivity training gets that ingrained ideology out of anyone's mind? No, it doesn't. Let me explain what I mean and how this comes to play. Think about this dichotomy. You have a black man who might have a knife that you struggle with, who's walking away to get in his car with his kids, and you shoot him out of fear. Some people say out of hate. I'm going to say out of fear. Yet, during riots and protesting, you have a white male walking towards you with an AK-47 or a, a AR-15 or whatever rifle he had. That Kyle uh, Riddingberg, I think his last name, guy up from Antioch that went up to Kenosha and shot those protesters. He's walking past the police with this and they're cool. Boy can't legally have a weapon. He can't legally have a weapon. This in the middle of chaos. If I were working in that environment, last thing I want to see is anybody other than law enforcement or the military personnel there from the National Guard walk around with any weapons. He don't even get stopped. Do you understand what I'm saying now? That fear. They didn't fear him. I could walk up with a Black Lives Matter shirt on and they're going to fear me. He can walk up with a rifle, not feared. So if you don't believe it's true, that dichotomy alone shows the reality of what I'm saying. This is reality. You know, so people can can act like that this doesn't exist, but this is the foundational problem within American society that we have to get past. We have to get past black men, black young black men particularly being looked at as a threat no matter what the situation is. Now, my friends on the left are going to act like that they are, you know, above all this. No, like I just said, you contribute to this. Now, how we get to this point with this young man, Kyle, going from Antioch with his rifle, decide he's going to protect something. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. I've been trying to tell y'all about this a whole long time. Real talk. Ultimately, if the powers that be allow for lawlessness, allow for looting and rioting. And let's be clear. The protesters are not the rioters and looters. And I'm not trying to hear... Oh, the, they're unheard. They're frustrated. No, they're opportunists. Walking out of Sally's Beauty Supply with beauty supplies is not protesting. Um, going downtown Chicago and tearing up businesses and, you know, looting the Portillo's, walking out with pieces of chocolate cake is not protesting. That's opportunism. All right. I get tired of y'all making this weak excuse that these this this generation's voice hasn't been heard. Whatever. This ain't the 60s and they ain't the Black Panthers. All right. This is a different scenario, different situation. And I know y'all keep talking. These young people ain't having it. No, they're not having it. And this isn't just black people. They're not having it because we raised them not to respect any authority. And we raised them to make them believe it's all about them. 
That's what we've done with this generation. All right. So y'all can cut out all that. Oh, they're frustrated, blah, 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 yada, yada. No, I'm not hearing that. Okay. Now the actual protesters out there, they got a point. They got something to say. I get that. But the ones rioting and looting, there's no point to that. And in fact, it has a net negative. The net negative we're beginning to see. Now you have other people feeling if this lawlessness is acceptable, then I'm going to take the law in my own hands, which is also lawlessness. And now you strolling up trying to protect stores. And this happened in Chicago when the Latin kings and the, the Latin mobs on uh, out in the south side decided they weren't going to let people tear up their neighborhood. They came out and violence happened between them and the, the Black Lives Matter people. So now we got violence between this white kid who goes up and shoots people. All right. And feeling justified himself. I can only guess the ideology that he has in his mind. But I guarantee you this much. It comes down to we've allowed and said, OK, well, the rioters, you know, we got idiots out there saying the rioters and looters are getting reparations. OK, you think that all this is falling on deaf ears. You think nobody's paying attention to this. And I see all of you concentrating on, well, this 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 white kid, he went up and oh, my God, he's a he's a terrorist. OK, you all with the same energy. When I'm talking about the hood, we talking about three and five and seven year olds getting killed. Y'all want to run that? Well, they're victims of their environment and then conditioning, mental conditioning. You know, um, the system has created that situation. And honestly speaking, I think the, the politics of America over the last four years has created a situation where that white kid felt comfortable going up there with that weapon and shooting people. I blame, or I should say, I put responsibility on Trump and the whole make America great again thing, his whole um, nod to white nationalism, his whole nod to neo-confederacy, his whole, his whole um, law and order versus the chaos of, of Black Lives Matter, his whole narrative, that's part of it. You know, the right, definitely the radical right is has pushed this issue. And this is where we're at. But those of you on the left who take stuff to the extreme, who will not look at yourselves and self-examine, he all part of the problem, too. Y'all part. This is what this is what you've helped create as well. You know, so I'm not going to vent anymore. Me and my homie, we're going to talk about this next week. I'll notify you all when we do the show. We're going to get into detail about this. You know, hey. Richard Graves at live.com. Questions, comments. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know, hate it or love it, like it or leave it. I'm just letting you know what it is, and I'll talk with you soon. Peace.